I don't know if you guys knew this. There's a movie that's pretty big. It's called Spider Man No Way Home. Really? It's been it's done pretty well. It's done all right. We're gonna talk about just how well it's done in just a little while. But, you know, the movie's been out for over a month now. So it's time to start looking forward. Even still wrote, still number one at the box office. Again, we're gonna talk about that in a bit. But it's been out for over a month, so it's time for everybody to start thinking about the home video release and all that kind of stuff. Now, Rob, we say all the time that uh, you know, physical media, it's 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 in its last days. It's in its waning dynasty. Well, last days. years. Last it's, sorry, years. yes, yes. It's it's in it's in the, the Maybe twilight. Last decade. You know, in the terms of Brother Dawn, Brother Day, and Brother Dusk, physical media is Brother Dusk. It, it's I mean, it's just been kind of on its way out, but it's still here. Yeah. For and a while. One of the best things about phys- even though I'm not a physical media guy, my number one favorite thing about physical media is bonus features. Now, they're slowly, finally starting to move bonus features onto streaming as well, which is nice. But, I mean, when you think bonus features, you're primarily thinking about the Blu-rays and stuff like that. Well, if you are a Spider-Man No Way Home fan, there is good news. If you're like me and like bonus features, because apparently there's reports coming out now that Spider-Man No Way Home uh, is going to be completely blacked out. No, Spider-Man No Way Home. um, There we go. Spider-Man No Way Home is said to have Almost two hours, over a hundred minutes of bonus features added onto its disc. It's about now, time. Now this is great because I have bought many a disc in my life. Excited about bonus features to see there's a five minute this and a seven minute that, and that's the bonus features. This actually a hundred minutes. Now it's not the Lord of the Rings bonus features, nope. and it's not Star Wars, the Phantom Menace, you know, bonus features. But still, this is a nice amount of bonus features. I mean, I really do hope one of the main things we're going to see on this is some kind of little 15-minute vignette about bringing the three Spider-Men together. I mean, if you just have like a little 15-minute mini documentary just about that, dude, it's been years since I bought a physical disc. I may go out and buy that disc. You put that on the disc, i probably go out and buy that disc. I mean, again, as a visual effects guy, I'd be fascinated to see some in-depth stuff about how they pulled together the, vi- the visual effects, how they did all that kind of stuff. All that sounds good to me, but at that... Now, I wanted to ask you, Rob, because, you know, you've... Not only are you somebody who appreciates physical media and you appreciate bonus features, you are literally a producer of bonus feature content. Indeed. You've done some of the biggest films in the world producing bonus feature content. You've got a damn Saturn Award. <laughs> uh, on your on your mantle for that I kind do. of stuff. So you hear about this, good news, bad news, and what kind of stuff do you think we can look forward to seeing on a Spider-Man No Way Home bonus features? Well, I think, John, you know, one of the great disappointments for me, I love the MCU. I have been very disappointed at the special features on the Marvel discs because I think like the movies themselves that tell this big interconnected story, they could have done the same thing with their bonus features. The same way that the team I work with on Lord of the Rings did that with the extended edition supplements. I hope what I want to know is I want to know, first of all, where did the idea of putting together all these, these, these villains from different timelines and the Spider-Man, where did that come from? You know, and, and once they came up with the idea, how did they, how did they set off on that set up, set off on that path? What was it like for Kevin Feige and Amy Pascal to reach out to Andrew Garfield and reach out to, to Tobey Maguire. I mean, how did that happen? And then once it happened, you know, what were the decisions that then led into the rest of the movie? I mean, there are great stories to tell there. And what I've worked on, I did a three hour documentary on the making of Superman Returns. And the genesis of that project was a big part of the story. And I think that people want to know these things. And like you said, the visual effects in this film were enormous. You know, and, and and I would love to see a bonus piece about how Marvel has to lie to our the fandom in trailers. Like, what happens when they've got a finished effect shot and they're like, well, we, we need to take Spider-Man out of this shot so people don't know. And there's there's so much interesting things they could cover. But to know that there's this much bonus features on this particular movie, I'm excited, John. I'm excited. What I really want to see is director's commentary as well. I mean, that, that to this day remains... Of all the more than blooper reels or outtakes or deleted scenes, or I, I can give her. I mean, I enjoy watching those, but honestly, I can give and take all of those. The main things to me are that the actual things talking about the making of the film, oh. like getting the how did the three Spider-Man come together? How did they put together visual effects? But director's commentary 
for me, has always been like the first thing I always look for. Oh, I agree. First thing I always go to. Hearing what was going on, hearing the director, and maybe sometimes they have a writer with them as well or whatever, talking about and going through the process of what they saw and how they pulled it together, what went into the thinking in this scene. I hope they have some John Watts doing that. I hope so too. I mean, you know, some of the director's commentaries, Kurt Russell and John Carpenter on Escape from New York. You can hear him cracking beers, talking about the movie. Mm-hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger on Conan the Barbarian with John Milius. I mean, these are essential. Uh, I love when I, you know, uh, David Fincher's commentaries. Amazing. I would love to have a John Watts commentary, especially because for him, this is his third Spider-Man movie. Yep. So And, and probably his last. Right. Hopefully he'll move over to Fantastic Four. Yeah, remember, wink, everybody, wink, everybody nudge, remember, nudge. he's now John Watts. A lot of people forget he's now, it's official. He's moving over to do Fantastic Four. So this very well could have been his last Spider-Man movie. Yeah. But you know who's been an auxiliary member of the Fantastic Four before? Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, yes, he has. Spider-Man has been a, a bench player for the Fantastic Four. So I don't know. Maybe John Watts brings Spider-Man into Fantastic Four. Who knows? <laughs> you know uh, the best could be. You know the best bonus features for for Marvel and Disney. For I meant Marvel and DC. For me, have been the first Iron Man. I think that's the way the, you do special features. There was good. They stuff. went there was into, really good stuff on. They the, went yeah. into the before. The, even the movie took place like uh john favreau like working himself up to start doing the movie to drawing the suit to making the suit to filming all the way up to even the premiere of the movie and i was like they were broken up in sections yeah and i was like this is the perfect template of how you please a ray aura you know what i mean <laughs> And the other one was crazy. By the way, you need to put that on your dating profile, too. <laughs> the, other one, please, Ray Ora. the other one was Batman Begins. Because what's funny about that disc is you had to find the special features. You had to click right two times. And then all of a sudden, the Batmobile would uh, glow. And you clicked on it. Yeah, that used For to years, I didn't know about this. I had the Batman Begins DVD. <laughs> and I watched all of it. And that was cool, too. So, you know what? I'm all ready for bonus features. That's the only reason why I buy Blu-rays now is for that. So let's do it. Let's put in more stuff in there. I I mean, I agree. I, I, you know, my, my favorite filmmaker of all time, Steven Spielberg, it frustrates the hell of me that he is so against bonus feature stuff and he doesn't do director's commentaries. And it's like, come on, Stephen, what are you doing? Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? The fact that it's going to be over 100 minutes of bonus features. Hopefully that doesn't include, you know, director's commentary. That's something else entirely. What are you hoping to see out? What kind of features do you want to see there? Is this enough to get you to go out and buy a disc if you're not really a disc buyer? What do you guys think? Jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts.